ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Answood. And today I'll be doing an introduction stroke care video into my parasitic strong odothus tester suit and the host tetramorium caspitum. Yeah, got that one out of the bag, didn't mess that one up once. But now you guys are going to tell me I've messed up on you. I know it. But first, I want to tell you about my Patreon page as standard with my videos now. Check it out, you get loads of benefits, you get some free stuff, etc., like that. So, by all means, join, help support my channel. All the money I make from this is going to go back into my channel, I'd like to point out. Like these guys here, they're more than happy to support me, and I'd love for your support too. So, if you do, check it out, I'll put a link in the description. But now, let's move on to the ants. I'm going to break this down into three parts, with the first part being about the new setup or the move into the new nest. And then I'm going to talk about the pavement ant, which is the queen you can see here, which is the Tetramorium to Caspitum. Jeez, didn't get it right that time. And then I'm going to talk about the Strong Arthus Testosus. This is their current setup. As you can see, they've got a test tube wrapped around it, and they've got some foil to keep them in the dark. And they've got the, I think this is the S1 Wakushi Outworld, which I do really rate. Um, but yeah, I've changed some bits on that, but I'll talk about it in a bit. If we take a look at the water here, you'll see that it's pretty dried out. There's practically no water in there at all. This is why I'm offering water in the outworld to them, if you notice that. And the test tube itself is getting quite busy with ants, so they're really ready for a nest now. I've decided to move them into this MS 3.5 Wakushi nest. If you go onto Wakushi's website, use this promo code and you'll get 10% off. Bonus, but anyway, I digress. Now I was saving that for my Solenopsis geminata or the fire ants as you can see here but I'm not an ant Canada, I've not brew boosted her to an inch of her life so I think I've got a bit of time before she needs to move on. But here's a big warning guys, these ladies need to have a nest ready to move into because they can grow overnight but lucky for me I've already got an order to replace the MS nest that I'm using so it should arrive before I'll ever need it, hopefully, fingers crossed. If we take a closer look at our outworld, you can see it's fairly dirty. You can see they've blocked up the entrance, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but these are really, really small, teeny tiny ants. I mean, they're like a couple of millimeters max. They, the, the smallest ants I actually own, which is problematic, as you'll see later on when I do the move. But you can see they've put all the rubbish around the honey as well. Now, I do actually rate the this outworld for small species because they're pretty tight and there's no way if these ants can't get out the likelihood no ants getting out but for some reason i say some reason maybe if wakushi can design something to be a bit better i'd love the outworld to be a lot smaller then they wouldn't have to use the cotton wool that i've pulled out of the test tube to block the hole up because obviously they're not happy with it being open so wakushi if you're listening mate make me a smaller exit to the outworld because that would be awesome. Now do you want to buy outworlds? I drive buy them with two exits. As you can see here, this one's only got one. And the reason for that is it makes it a lot easier to connect like newer outworlds, bigger outworlds, or new nests like I am today. And because I didn't do that with this one, I found it very difficult to, to connect a new nest up to it. And you'll see that in a bit. Now Wakushi do do aftermarket parts for it so you can get a second exit as you can see here from the different outworld sites. But I've got to spend another three pound on this. Then I've got to spend another three pound on getting the tube adapter for it because the standard one won't be good for these species to be able to get out of it. So the costs do mount up a little bit. Now because the outworld's only got one exit, I've got no choice but to break the tube in and put a junction in. So I'm using this little T-junction. This is actually an Ant Canada junction. And to tell you the truth, this is one of his products I do really rate, they're really good. Now, excuse the dirty nails, I have been in the garden, that's my excuse. Don't leave comments about me being gross, but I am gross, so there. But because Wakushi use obscenely large tubing, especially for the MS nests, now the MS nests are designed for small species, hence why I'm using them for my smaller species, but it uses like a 15 mil tubing for it, which is huge. So, because Ants Canada and mainly the tubing I use is around the 12 mils, I have to get the larger tubing, make it into a smaller tubing so it fits into the junction. Now you might ask yourself, why don't you just use a normal junction box that you get, which I've used many a times before, but when there's a big space like that, they turn it into rubbish and there's not many of the junction boxes that I've come across, if any, where I can easily clean it out. So I generally try to avoid them and use the and it's kind of junctions if I can. And if I speed it up so I don't bore you to death, as you can see here, I'm just connecting it all up until I get the finished product, cutting it down to size as you can see. 
Now, the reason I've not put a flat tubing on one side is because there's already tubing connected to the outworld and that's what I was going to use. Now, some of the bits I'm going to need is all the connectors and cotton wool because I need to block the tubing off or the accesses for the ants that don't all escape everywhere. Well, that's the plan. But as you'll see, a plan is as good as the first round. It's a military say, basically the first bullet because then everything changes. And that's what happens here. Everything changes. And to take, I've speeded it up so you don't bore you to death again. Now, I was absolutely shocked with the numbers I've got of these ants. Because they're so small and they're in such a small area, I didn't realize how many I had. So as soon as I tried to disconnect them, they swarmed me. And as you can see here, I spent ages picking them up the swarm because they get everywhere and dropping them back in. This is why another good reason to have some cotton wool on the side. As you can see, look how many are in the outworld because I've picked them up because they've been running everywhere. So it's very important that you've got some method of picking them up. I would normally use my hoover on any other hand, but these are just too small and I think they'll get sucked into the sucky sucker thing in the hoover, keyboard hoover, so I didn't bother using it. Now I had to stop and reconnect it all because that was just a disaster. So I try again this time with a bit more cotton wool on the end to, 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 to stop them getting out and to see what I could do. I was trying very hard not to kill any ants because it's very easy with a species this small to kill them. But I put the cotton wool there, I think I'm happy days, and then put a cotton wool in the end of the other test tube, which that bit, that bit goes well. Thumbs up for hood. And this is such an appropriate gift because I generally do burn after this. <laughs> I swear this. Anyway, the car crash of me trying to sort this out continues. When I first tried to connect the tube and it's in the test tube now, I couldn't fit it in because it had already been squished from the outworld, so it wouldn't fit into the smaller tubing that I'd used. So I had to put my take it out and put my thumb over it, then tap the excess ants back into the outworld again, as you can see what I'm doing here. But then I really struggled with the new tubing to get it into the test tube. And as you can see, as I try to take the cotton wool out, I've already got them crawling over my hand. And as soon as I release it, I get loads of them everywhere. And this is so unfortunate because I thought I'd just tipped it in enough to get them in there. And then I could clean up the excess ants because they're all over my hand. They're everywhere um, to try and minimize the amount of them escaping and getting everywhere. As you can see, they're all over the work surface and everything. But it didn't work as you're about to see. As I tried to connect the tubing into the outworld to connect that up properly, which even then I didn't even do that bit properly because I was too scared of hurting, killing the ants. As you can see, I've moved everything and then the test tube, as soon as I remove my hand, yes, filming angles is not my strong point, the test tube comes out and they're everywhere, absolutely all over the place and it's a nightmare. So I thought the best course of action is to stop filming so I can properly pay my attention to clean it all up. Now I totally managed to get them all together believe it or not but as you can see I've got ants everywhere but if you more specifically look at the nest itself you can see it takes them all of three seconds to explore that nest uh, completely explore it because they're such fast movers and the move is literally instantaneous to the point where I started doing a time lapse which I'm not going to show because it's so short to film the move but as you can see here already they're just moving the brood so I decided to put in real time so you can see it and as I sometimes do, I'll put a little bit extra video at the end, a, a link so you can see the full move if you want to. Believe it or not, my intention was to hook these up, go grab a shower, do stuff throughout the day, and then come back and hopefully see the move, but they're on it. They're not wasting no time. Literally, as soon as it's connected, as soon as they found that nest, boom, the move is on. Um, and you can see this, like I said, you can see this if you want um, in the link at the end. But I'll go to some key points in it. It literally took 10 minutes of filming before you see the queen, the Tetramorian queen this is, move out of the test tube and head towards the outworld. She does dither a little bit, but you see off screen, but she generally moves straight, straight in there and doesn't mess about, which is cool to see actually. And I carried on recording because I wanted to see the strong Lothus queen because I've not seen her for a very long time because of the brood pile in there and stuff like that so I was quite keen to see her so I carried on recording until I could spot her and I generally thought that maybe she's on her way out because you don't see a lot of workers cutting around but I'll talk more about that in a bit but I'd, I've never I haven't seen her um, for a long time so I was kind of curious to see if she was actually still alive literally one minute after the main queen moved the strong Lothus queen moved and you can just see her there can you see her? I'll point her out now. 
She literally did not want to move and she's getting dragged by a Tetramorium worker. Um, at first I was a bit like, is that the queen? But then after having a close look, yeah, that that, that is the Strongloth's queen, but she blatantly doesn't want to move. <laughs> There's a bit of a wrestle going on as well. Now, I did have a bit of concerns. I did look her in the nest and you'll see her in a bit and she is actually fine. And this is them currently as it is this second I just took this video. You can see they've moved in quite happily. Yes, you might say the nest is too big for them, but there's not a lot of nests I trust out there, especially with a small species. And I do generally trust these nests. I would recommend them. They're very, very easy to maintain humidity in. But like I said, I've got no vested interest in Wakushi. I just like his stuff. And yes, even the Venus nest within its limitations. But let's move on to the care side of life. Now, I'll talk about the Tetramorium Crispitum care because they are the ones that the host attaches to. So if you get their care right, then the host, the host, the parasite is gonna do fine. So let's talk about her first. Now the temperature is around 21 to 24 degrees C with humidity of 50 to 60%. So pretty standard for UK climate, but I can say my ant cave has got a bit warmer than that around touching the high 20s and they've still thrived and done fine. So follow the guidelines, but don't be too worried if your room gets hot. Sorry about the focusing being all over the place, but that happens when you get a cheap setup. They do hibernate to around November to March time at approximately five to eight degrees C, which is pretty standard yet again for a UK species. And the food requirements are pretty standard too, with normal proteins such as insects, I use cockroaches and honey water for the carbohydrates or some variant of. Now let's talk about the strong Lothus testisus. Now she is super difficult to spot because as you can see from this picture, literally this is the only still that I've got and that's a screenshot from the video you're about to see. She is so difficult to spot and see and film. It is unreal and in the test tube, it was nigh on impossible to distinguish her from the workers because she's a very similar size. Now she's actually classed as a slave maker, but she's not like your former Cassanguini because she doesn't go and raid other nests for slaves and then keep them and raise them as slaves. What she actually does is infiltrates a Tetramorium nest and then uses chemicals to stop the Tetramorium queen from producing reproductives. Now, why she does that, I don't really know because she's already infiltrated. They're already looking after her and a brood and stuff like that. So why does she need to stop them reproducing? reproducing? I don't know, but it's an interesting point. Now, she's fairly rare to find in the natural world, but even rarer as an ant keeping world as well. But you're not gonna notice like two different Connellys in one because the strong Larthus and the Tetrasus queen, uh, queens, workers, look very similar, very, very similar. In fact, even the slow Larthus queen looks very similar to Tetramorium workers, which is why she's so difficult to find. But when she does produce young, they'll only represent maybe one in a hundred of the Tetramorium workers, so they're hard to see as well. You can see here that they've settled really nicely into this nest. They're not, I've got light shining on the red filter and they're not noticing it at all. So the red filter works really well and they've seemed really settled down. I have disturbed them a lot today doing this video. So I want them to chill out for a while now. Now I picked these up from Ant Antics. They had loads of cool, unusual species and I told you how rare these are in nature, never mind in the anting community. So we've got loads of cool, unusual species. I also got my other slave makers, my former consanguinis from them as well. So for different species and stuff like that, they're really good to check out. Now I've really got an affinity for parasitic queens at the moment, just because I think they're super interesting. But anyway, I'll stop gobbling on. I'll put a link in the top right corner now so you can check out all the raw footage or the unused footage that I've used uh, in this video. I will put some classical music onto it so you can chill out to it because I just love a bit of classical music, who doesn't? Uh, but yeah, if you like them, don't forget to comment because I do these videos every so often, but I'm not sure how they'll sit. they sit reciprocated by you guys. But anyway, I'll stop talking rubbish. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next one and bye-bye for now.